Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I have a reading vlog. Before all of this happened, I planned to have a long weekend of reading and record that experience. And so that is what I have chosen to do today. I started with Cloud Atlas on Friday and I'm just going to take you through my weekend and see how it went. And I hope it don't bore you too much. Last night I decided that I was going to finish Monkey because I hadn't finished that. That is now done and I might discuss it in future having learned more about the story than I previously had when I thought it was just the source material for the Legends of Monkey TV show. And I did that so as I could make a significant dent in Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. And so when I woke up this morning rather late due to the fact that I couldn't sleep having accidentally knocked a spider to the floor of my bedroom and wondering whether it was going to creep up and bite me, as spiders have done previously. When I awoke, I took this book downstairs and I started reading. Now, a bleary-eyed Charlie cannot read books as fast as a completely compass mentors Charlie, and so the first chapter, which is only 45 or so pages, took me a rather long time to read. I have to say, it isn't like one of those books that I can speed through. There have been certain passages, like the second story in here, that seem to move really quickly, but I do find myself having to take some time. There was also a bit regarding Tim Cavendish, who is a character I knew I recognised, and apparently he is in Ghost Written. I went and I checked and I found his name in Ghost Written, though I don't think he was a significant player in that. His is one of the main stories in here. I am currently 249 pages in. I've been reading it all day. It's about half past three. I'm hoping to finish this today and if I don't finish it today at least get to the page 400 mark and break that barrier. The reason I want to read this fast is because th so often I have started this book and never made it further than page 20 and so I am determined not to turn this book into a DNF. Once again I am finding myself astounded by David Mitchell's prose and I think that that might continue. I like the way he has fitted the links in between each separate story and I am interested to see how he's going to bring it all back together in the end. Going into the weekend, I do have plans to actually also make a dent in some TV shows. I want to get some of The Mandalorian watched and maybe watch a few films, so I have plans in place for that. And then I know that Rainy of Rainy Day Reads and Elaine Howland are hosting a wine and cheese social tomorrow evening. I don't know whether I can participate because we're due to start lambing tomorrow and I don't know whether my help will be needed. In terms of reading, which you can do whether lambing is happening or not, I am going to read Olive Kitteridge by Elizabeth Strout because one of the books that I have to read for the Booktube Prize is Olive again and even though I believe you can read that book separately without having read this first book I thought it only right that I read Olive Kitteridge because Joy from the writers group has been telling me I ought to have read this by now and when I discovered that it was about an older female character I do think that I should have definitely read this. Then leads me to again try and prioritise some of the Booktube Prize reading as well as getting a few other books in there that I want to read. So on my TBR video last week Matthew of MTS Books commented that Cloud Atlas and The Old Drift by Namwali Supal complement each other so I had ideas of going out of Cloud Atlas and going straight into the old drift. However, due to the books I need to read for the Booktube Prize, that isn't going to happen now. And also I watched a video from Jesse of Bowties and Books last night, which made me want to bring Riot Baby by Tochi Onyebuchi to the forefront of my TBR. Two books that I definitely need to read because they are for the Booktube Prize are Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson and Olive Again by Elizabeth Strout. These seem to be relatively short books, so it's about a day's reading here. So my entire weekend could be made up with these three books, but I've heard that Red at the Bone is a rather quick read. It's rather short, so this might be the next thing I go into. I didn't actually end up finishing reading Cloud Atlas yesterday, simply because there is a part called Slusha's Crossing and Everything After and I reached that part 
and up until that point I'd found some of the stories a bit slow but until that one I hadn't struggled and lord that was a struggle to get through. I started it at 10 to 4 and I didn't finish it until 10 o'clock last night. It was one of the most difficult passages to read. It was written in a strange dialect and you had to really think about what was being said, at least I did. It just slowed everything down for me and I'm still not quite sure of the point of it. The problem was there were so many more stories before that that I'd been interested in that I didn't care about that one. That did detract from my experience of reading for a bit. Then when I finally got past reading that part, which is only 80 pages, each story is 80 pages but they're cut. I didn't like that chapter. Then we moved on to the next chapter and whilst I was glad to be getting more about the story that we'd had of this fabricant, I wanted to get back to a certain story. And then I got there and I was thrilled to get there so I ended up staying awake until one o'clock just to get to page 400 of this and get through the story that I'd wanted to. And now I'm at another story that I was enjoying which is Half Lives, the first Louisa Ray mystery and then I'm going to finish this in the next two hours maybe and then my plans for today, even though I have these books here to read, are to watch the next episode of RuPaul's Drag Race, make a start on The Mandalorian, edit a video for Monday and then record some more videos for this week. So this will probably be on the only book I finish today and I'll just make a start on one of the others when I eventually have the chance. When I finished recording yesterday I thought that'd be the end of that clip and I would be going off and finishing reading Cloud Atlas immediately because I only had 130 pages to read. That didn't happen because I remembered that the next episode of RuPaul's Drag Race was online and so I chose to watch that and then I chose to watch an episode of The Mandalorian and then I watched The Vivian Takes Hollywood. Once all that had finished it was two o'clock and my sister came home. I decided to chat to her and so at three o'clock once I'd finished chatting to her I came inside and started reading. It actually took me longer to read than I anticipated and I realised that I wasn't actually reading two pages a minute as I previously thought. I was actually only able to read a page a minute of this book. I don't have a problem with that. I don't like to rush reading in any way after I'd made tea and all that and I was just left with the final chapter to read. I have had a problem with the final chapter. It goes back to the first character we meet who's telling his tale through diary entries. And I had an issue going into this book because of those diary entries. It's why it's taken me so long to get through over these years because I just found it a bit impenetrable. So I took my time with it and I ended up finishing it whilst watching Adam from Memento Mori do his live stream last night. I like the book. I understand what the writer was getting at, but it is by no means my favourite piece of fiction in the world. I appreciate how each of the different characters is supposedly the reincarnation of the first character. I like how each of the stories reaches its climactic point and how it feels somewhat cyclical. I like that it discusses um, slavery and the different classes in society. I could see myself going back and rereading certain passages with characters I liked. Whilst I thought it was more accomplished than ghostwritten and all that, I didn't actually like it as much as I liked ghostwritten. And then this morning I got up with the intention of reading Read at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson and I have read this book now. It only took an hour. I can't talk about it at the moment because I'm reading this for the next round of the Booktube Prize but you can expect my thoughts about this in June. That leaves me to figure out what I'm going to read for the rest of the day. I do keep thinking about reading Olive Kitteridge by Elizabeth Strout. The font seems quite big and we've been doing a lot of reading of short stories to make up an entire narrative recently haven't we and I need to read this before I read Olive again for the booktube prize. We'll see apparently it's a penetrating vibrant exploration of the human soul that will make me laugh, nod in recognition, wince in pain and shed a tear or two. Um, 
okay, I'm going to be off. But I do just want to say, I do feel like I've achieved something now by having finished reading Cloud Atlas because this has been on my TBR for years. I completely forgot to add that I actually have to bake a cake today. Yes, I planned this weekend of reading to have some content for you all and then chose to just read one book, another that I can't talk about, but my father has asked me to make a cake. I made one earlier this week and didn't think it was going to go down well and he says, well, I ate it, didn't I? So he asked me to make him another one for this evening. So today I will also be making a Victoria sponge. This is what happens when they're off lambing. I turn into sort of the house husband. And it's Monday. I am going to be bringing this reading vlog to an end today. How did things go? Well, I didn't have enough ingredients. Well, I didn't have enough flour. I needed 200 grams and I had a grand total of 92 grams. So it became 92 grams of flour, 92 grams of sugar, 92 grams of butter, and that was the cake. Shove enough jam and cream on there, have a thin slice, and it's just like having something from the 1970s when portion sizes weren't too large. I also ended up, whilst I was cooking yesterday, listening to more of Feet of Clay by Terry Pratchett. I now only have four hours left of that audiobook. I listen to audiobooks incredibly haphazardly now. It used to be every single time I was cooking. Last year in January and February, it made up the bulk of my reading. I always say that I listen to audiobooks as opposed to reading audiobooks, not because I don't believe they count, I wouldn't include them in these wrap-ups if I didn't think that they counted, but because I see it as a different way of taking the book in. It's still nice to listen to them and Nigel Planer really has a comedic ear with when it comes to the Terry Pratchett Discworld novels and so I always feel like I'm in good hands when it comes to listening to one of those audiobooks. I'm also enjoying this one more because it's a bit of a supernatural murder mystery and you know if it's a supernatural murder mystery then usually it's going to be something that I enjoy. I did say as I was going to read Olive Kitteridge yesterday and hopefully maybe finish it. I wanted to get far enough through it that I would finish it today anyhow so as I could really make a dent in the Book Two Prize books. As I've previously said this book isn't part of my reading for the Book Two Prize. Its sequel is on the selection of books that I have to read and because of that I wanted to acquaint myself with the first book. I believe that this is a series of short stories all surrounding the character of Olive Kitteridge and all the people in her life. So far I have only read the first story, Pharmacy, and I am being reminded of Kathleen Rooney in the style of the prose, which isn't a bad thing. It does have a very American voice, but there is also a separate character behind that voice, if that makes sense. I don't mind what I always called the detached American voice, which is common in short stories in America and with certain writers in America, if it has another voice behind it. Sometimes it, ha it can have this sense of detachment and I don't think that this had that. I haven't yet properly met the character of Olive, but from what we've seen so far and reading between the lines, there is a lot going on in this family just from the first 30 pages of this one story, which is from the perspective of her husband, Henry. So I am looking forward to finishing this one and seeing what all the hype has been about and why everyone has been telling me to read this book since it was first released. And that's me, that's my week. I don't know whether I'm going to do another sort of reading vlog like this. I will have read 760 pages over the entirety of the weekend. And yes, that does make me think that I could have made a huge dent in The Eighth Life by Nino Harrisville. I could have probably finished this if I'd given myself that time. And you never know, I might decide to just get this book read completely um, in one sitting. Well, not one sitting, but I have 500... No, I don't. I have more than 500 pages of this. I have 700 pages of this book left, so I could definitely have used that time to finish this. But it's not due back at the library till May 31st, so what did you think to this style of video? Um, what did you think to the books that I've read? If you have read them yourself, please feel free to open up the discussion in the comments. I hope that you have 
enjoyed this video and until next time that is all